Hai. Hai. Hello. Hi. Guys. Hi. 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 How's everybody doing today? Good. Great. Good. Good. Super great in action. I'm the background you want. Are we tired? Yeah. Quiet. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. I have kind of a headache today. Hi. Oh, Mrs. Mintia. Going in. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hi, Mrs. Min. Hello. Hi. Hi. Well, while we wait for the last few people to join, um, yes, he's on. Have any of you? Someone is humming into their microphone, which is delightful. But I'm going to ask you to. Stop the humming okay. on the cow. Miles, did you have something you wanted to say? It's Teacher Appreciation Day today. Oh, great. And me and my brother made posters. <gasps> How cool. Oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Your block letters. It, yeah. Mm -hmm. I love it. They, they look 3D. Are they 3D letters? Are yeah. they? That's awesome. They're always 3D. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. That's right. Well, I certainly appreciate my three D letters, three D letters. Okay. So okay. Um, no. It was like this. Well, oh, who, was somebody trying to say something? I'm sorry. No. Okay. I um, was gonna say. I hope you read the email this morning's email. No. Um, if you haven't, I really recommend uh, when I write those morning emails, I'm writing them with you guys in mind. So I'm hoping that what's happening uh, whenever it's possible is that you and your parents are reading them together so that you both know uh, what the announcements are for the day and any plans that have changed or been added to our, to our week. My dad um, loud, so. Oh, perfect, perfect, okay. So this morning I talked to you about the project at the school in which, and I don't know if you've been around the school, if you've passed by, you may have seen some hearts up in the window. Um, Mrs. Carrillo did an activity with the primary students where they made a hug out of paper um and some of those are in the window and so i want to encourage you i want to encourage you to um make something if you can that we could put up in the window at school so that when people are passing by our school they can see that message from you just a heart or um you know a, a message a little sign like miles made with his block letters um, anything like that at all that you would like me to put up in the window, um, you can just drop it off in the bin that is sitting outside the front door of the main building. And, um, oh, Ava made one look beautiful. Oh, I love it, Ava. That's great. Um, and then um, when the teachers are at the school, they're going to pick them up out of the bin and they're going to post them in the windows. So then you can drive by and you can see all the things your kid, your classmates have made. Um, and anybody driving by our school is going to see 
that we have a lively community um, sending out messages to everybody who passes by. So I hope you'll participate if you can. Um, I'll be over there tomorrow. Mrs. Min is gonna meet me there tomorrow and finish up those photocopies we've been talking about. So um, we will happily put any hearts or messages up that we find in the bin tomorrow. Um, it might help to put your name on them and then we'll know whether they should go up in the elementary building or the primary building, but we also might just put them wherever we have a window that needs a, needs a little love. Okay, so back to Miss Petty for our next chapter or section is Miss Pettifor and the Jumble. It was a lovely spring day with the taste of licorice on the breeze and little green shoots shooting all about and tender tendrils all alive with leaf. And Miss Pettifor decided it was time to give her wee cottage a proper clean out. Sometimes opening one's closet is as much of an adventure as an expedition into the wilderness, especially in the spring, and especially Miss Pettifor's closet, because all winter, every bit of string, every particularly attractive sweet wrapper, every yo-yo with chipped paint, every sock with a hole in the toe, every unusually bumpy rock found in the playground, every twig shaped like a Y, every bent colander, every tweezer that no longer tweezes, every broken gizmo was thrown in and the closet door quickly slammed behind it. I have a couple of closets like that in my house. To assist her in her spring cleaning, Miss Pettifor asked her young friend, Pleasant Patel, the baker's daughter who lived with her family above Mr. Patel's bakery, to come and open the closet with her. Pleasant was a nowadays girl, always up to the minute with good modern ideas, which Miss Pettifor considered a pleasant change. She knew about cling-free dusting mitts and tornado vacuums, for example, and all the latest cleaning tools. While the cats appreciated the importance of a good spring cleaning as much as anyone, they had been rather looking forward instead to spending the morning outside, especially Mustard and Mutard and Hemdala and Earring, who loved any sort of game that involved madly running around the back garden. And so the cats were not there to witness the crucial moment when Pleasant, with Miss Pettifor hiding behind the sofa, pulled open the closet door. I'm sure you can imagine the assortment of items that came hurtling out of the closet when Pleasant opened the door, so I shall only take time to mention a few things. A typewriter, a bicycle with a wicker basket, seashells, a bag of single socks, and about a hundred of those small plastic toys that are born out of chocolate eggs, which flew out of the closet and pinged every which way. Pleasant had wisely thought to wear her bicycle hel helmet and goggles, so she was not afraid of flying plastic bits ricocheting off the walls. Certain words are like twists of crumpled paper jammed into the hole in the bottom of a leaky pail to keep the story from spilling out too quickly. Words like, meanwhile, by the way, it is interesting to note, and that reminds me of, adults use these words all the time when they are afraid things are getting too exciting. Meanwhile, on the village green, most of the villagers were busily setting up the great spring jumble sale. Every five years or so, there was a really massive jumble, a sale of such proportion that it could only be held outside. Out of their cottages, the villagers streamed, carrying armloads of rummage. It was almost impossible to believe such quantities could come from such tiny houses. Wagon loads, barrows full, bird cages full, hats full, with pockets bulging, everyone transported their treasures to the green. 
Um, Miles, our book is Miss Pettifor, The Adventures of Miss Pettifor. And um, as you can see, she likes to travel via tablecloth. And she has, did we say 16 cats? And they all travel with her in a long line like this. Um, and I also stopped to ask you if you guys know what a jumble is. Uh, Mia, what do you think? I can't seem to unmute you. Can you unmute yourself there, dear? Thank you. It's like where like all the like wild animals are. Oh, you're or thinking of the jungle with a G, jungle. Oh. Yeah. You're right about the jungle for sure. This is, we're talking about a jumble with a B. Any ideas, guys? Um, Addie. Oh. I'm pretty sure it's like an assortment of stuff that's just in one area. Yeah, yeah. If I, um, if I looked into the yarn basket after read aloud, I would probably see a jumble of yarn all tangled up together, right? Yeah. Now, in this book, they're using the word in a slightly different way. Nora, do you have an idea about how they're using it here? I think it just means like a lot of broken, broken things that people don't use anymore, but things to, like people can use, just like in a big pile, kind of like uh -huh. Yeah, um, I think, I think that what we would call this that they're about to do, we would call it a garage sale. You guys have seen garage sales, right? Yeah. And you know how sometimes the whole neighborhood gets together and everybody holds their garage sale on the same weekend so that lots of people can come? Yeah. Um, the, my grandma, my grandma who was born in 1920, her name for a garage sale was a rummage sale. So rummage and jumble both mean a collection of assorted objects that don't really have anything to do with one another. And so a rummage sale or a garage sale means everybody cleaned out their basement, everybody cleaned out their, their closets, and now they're trying to sell all this random stuff. I thought rummage meant you just like dig through a big pile of something to find other stuff. Yes, when you're using it as a verb, that's exactly what it means. And can you see a little bit of a relationship there? Yeah, because you're digging through stuff to find that gives you anything you like. Only. Yeah. It's also, now that I think about it, it's also the action you take when you go to a garage sale or a rummage sale. You kind of rummage around to decide if you want to buy any of that stuff. Yeah. yeah. So there you go. So rummage, jumble, all of it means garage sale in this particular context. Okay? Back to the book. Because there was so much to sell, the jumble sale was organized alphabetically. This was the brilliant idea of Mrs. Bois Brioche. Excuse me, she has a very long name. Mrs. Bois Brioche de Fontana Herodale Keslo Brisbane, who had been born in France and liked to tidy things, and who had volunteered to supervise the massive sale. She firmly believed that the alphabet would keep everything in its place. Alarm clocks, bow ties, calculators, collars, including dog collars, fur collars, and shirt collars, and coriander. Galoshes, gauntlets, and goblets. Irons, curling irons, golf irons, waffle irons. Sponges, sponge cake, sponge toffee, teapots, terrible jokes, tinsel. There were always mistakes made. What were the bunnies doing among the footballs, frying pans, and furbelows, for example? I don't know what a furbelow is. I'm going to write that down and look it up. Mrs. Bois Brioche de Fontana, Herodale Keslow Brisbane 
was splendid at sorting out these alphabetical catastrophes, for she was very good at the alphabet and never got flustered in the face of jam tarts amid umbrellas or umbrellas amid jam tarts. <coughs> or fossils and fountain pens mixed up with salad bowls and sugar cubes for that matter. But Mrs. Boisbrioche de Fontana Haredale Keslow Brisbane did have one particular weakness. She always thought people were calling her name. No one could understand why this was so. It would be per perfectly understandable if one's name were Mrs. Gustavo Wentworth Worthington Donquist Torridale Blinden Perstantian Withers or Mrs. Randolfo Blunt Mer Maritonk Goodland Cerny Attenbach Carsdall Tentwood, but surely not a name like Boisbrioche de Fontana Haredale Keslow Brisbane. And that is why, while she remained calm in the face of alphabetical chaos, she was also unfortunately prone to nervous fits at jumble sales. Perhaps it was the large crowd or all that jumble or her sense of duty that made her think everyone was shouting her name. Whatever the reason, she always rushed about certain she was being called for. But Mrs. Br Boisbrioche de Fontana Haredale Keslow Brisbane was such a jolly sort and always so generous with the fruit gums in her cardigan pocket that no one felt grumpy about this small eccentricity. An eccentricity is something everyone has, but everyone has a different one. An eccentricity is a quirky thing we like to do just because. Perhaps you like to always put on your right shoe first. Or perhaps you like to count by twos when you're bored. Or perhaps you only like to eat popcorn on Tuesdays. Or perhaps you like to count digressions and keep a record of them at the back of every book you read. Meanwhile, again, Miss Pettifor, who all this time had been sitting among the contents of her closet, which had shot out when Pleasant opened the door, suddenly remembered the jumbo sale. Jumbo sale. <laughs> she had almost forgotten, though the date had been marked in her calendar for the past five years. Thinking she might offer for sale her navy blue pea coat with buttons with anchors on them, which was years too short for her. She extracted it from the pile, but along with the coat, inextricably entangled with the wire coat hanger, came another wire coat hanger, and another, and another, each more tangled than the next, until a great wire ball, a twisty, jangly jamboree of metal gibberish, twanged its way out of the closet. Like so. Pleasant Patel felt sure that this tangled, twangled ball would be a welcome item at the sale and dragged it across Miss Pettifor's plush living room carpet into the garden. Miss Pettifor and Pleasant gazed with admiration at this collection of jittery metal glinting in the sunlight. Now, Minky, Misty, Taffy, Persia, Pirate, Mustard, Mutard, Hemdala, Earring, Grigorovich, Clasby, Captain, Captain, Captain Catkin, Captain Clothespin, Your Shyness and Sizzles, and Miles, those are the names of the cats, uh, were in the garden enjoying a leisurely game of badminton when Miss Pettifor and Pleasant brought out the coat hangers. Immediately, the cats slinked over to inspect the display on the lawn and decided it was a wonderful jungle gym on which to play. While the cats were cavorting and climbing, Miss Pettifor and Pleasant, wanting to give the cats a bit of fun, decided to give the coat hangers a good shake. Well, do you think this was wise? To take a ball of gnarly, nervous, knotted wire coat hangers and shake it in the frisky spring breeze? Indeed, no, it was not. What had been simply jangly, now became forevermore, eternally, and no doubts about it, complicated, snagged, and securely snarled. Just then, with the cats capering among the coat hangers, the breeze turned gusty and the wire tangle began to shiver. The shivering grew deeper and deeper until the whole coat hanger contraption 
began to shudder as if it would explode. With great presence of mind, Miss Pettifor tied one end of a length of string, she always kept string in her coat apron pocket in case of emergency, to the nearest coat hanger and tied the other end to her apron. She then grabbed the nearest tablecloth, green gingham for spring, and Pleasant's eager hand just as the wind picked up. And off they all sailed. The cats loved every single one of their flights with Miss Pettifor, but this was perhaps their most exhilarating flight yet. The coat hangers collided and crashed, hummed and thundered, clattered and rumbled. Coat hanger cacophony. With the fresh spring wind rushing through their fur, the cats leaped and swung, hurtling headlong, 16 cat acrobats on a thrilling coat hanger trapeze. Luckily, the wind was in the direction of the jumble sale, and along they flew over Mrs. Carruthers' grocery shop and Mr. Clemo's hardware shop, all the way to the village green. From a distance, it looked as if Miss Pettifor and Pleasant were hanging by a furry metallic cloud. In fact, the villagers on the green began to panic, thinking that the great rumbling noise they were hearing was thunder. A thunderstorm on the day of the great spring jumble sale? disaster. Just as they reached the far side of the green, the wind suddenly dropped and down Miss Pettifor and Pleasant and the cats clattered, landing like a coat hanger meteorite right in the middle of the jumble sail. The cats were delighted. In an instant, Minky, Misty, Taffy, Persia, Pirate, Mustard, Mutard, Hemdala, Earring, Grigorovich, Claspy, Captain, 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 Catkin, Captain, Clothespin, Your Shyness, and Sizzles were darting with great glee amongst the postage stamps, packets of erasers, moccasins, swimming fins, paint pots, and whistles. They ran in and out of the clothes, loose, drab, flouncy, silky, frilly dresses, jackets with zippers, clasps, snaps, and toggles, Trousers that were old fashioned, new fashioned, shiny, teensy, plain, plaid, too long and too short, hats with feathers, buckles, ribbons, and flowers. Cat costume heaven. The jumble was in an uproar. Everyone was rushing about looking for umbrellas, still thinking it was going to pour rain any minute, or trying to capture the runaway tumbleweed of coat hangers that was rolling through the piles of rummage collecting things as it went. Everything seemed to be in danger of becoming entangled in its wiry grasp. Poor Mrs. Bois Brioche de Fontana Haredale Keslow Brisbane was in such a flap. She thought everyone was calling her name at once and ran about not knowing what to do first. It is interesting to note that Miss Pettifor was still attached to the coat hangers by her apron string. And so she too was running about, hoping to control the haywire menace and perhaps tackle it to a stop. Working at the jumble sale was poor Colonel By, who had been helping his wife sort through a table full of bird cages when the coat hangers crashed. Everyone thought of him as poor Colonel By because his wife, Mrs. Colonel Adria Slope Nethertop Ashbridge Terence Pope. Koswinski by, was always giving him a quick wallop with her handbag. A wallop is when you hit someone with your handbag. Wap. <laughs> so that's not very nice. Mrs. Colonel Adria Slope Nethertop Ashbridge Terrence Poswinski by was very sensitive to teasing and always thought her husband was teasing her, though he wasn't. Sometimes she walloped him simply out of affection or when she wanted to get his attention. Some people have habits such as this. They giggle when they're nervous or they shout when they have nothing to say. Well, the Colonel's wife was a walloper. I believe we may count this as a digression. In any case, Colonel By and his wife had both been alarmed by the clanging jangle when the coat hangers landed, and they can be forgiven for thinking it was, it was raining paper clips. Everyone at the jumble sale was in a muddle, 
thinking the sky was raining down all sorts of crashing, clanging metal things. Nuts and bolts, hubcaps and bottle caps, garbage can lids and roller skates. And to top it off, the most outrageous thing of all was that the items at the jumble were now out of alphabetical order. A tuba had smashed into the frisbees. A camera had plunked into the tray of false mustaches. Everything had become alphabet soup. Mrs. Boisbrioche de Fontana Haradale Keslow Brisbane, realizing this, began squealing with distress and chasing after 800 marbles as they hurtled toward 42 rolled up carpets. Without alphabetical order, who would ever find the soup spoons and the neckties and the false eyelashes and the broken typewriter? The P's had flipped over into the Q's, the B's were in the D's, and the W's had toppled into the M's. The jumble sale was in a jumble. Now, standing in the midst of this bubbling flub dub hubbub, <laughs> with her hands on her hips and looking very intelligent, was brave young Pleasant Patel. She was not standing idly by. Oh, no, indeed. Pleasant was staring hard at the table full of bird cages. What miraculous thing, she wondered, could a person do with 50 empty bird cages? Then Pleasant looked across the green and saw two things, the wire ball careening wildly toward her and all 16 cats madly waving their tails at her as if they were throwing 16 footballs. And in a flash, Pleasant had a plan. When a huge ball is hurtling in your direction at high speed, what do you do? You build a net to catch the goal. Pleasant leaped into action, piling the bird cages on top of one another. Colonel By, standing by, quickly understood what Pleasant was up to, and he rushed to join in. And just as they finished stacking the very last bird cage at the very tip of the top, the massive coat hanger ball slammed into the goal. Score! shouted Colonel By. Goal! cheered Pleasant, waving her arms excitedly while the cats all caterwauled one to nothing. Well, the sound of the goal was near deafening. Everyone on the village green came to a standstill. All eyes turned to the twangling ball and the mound of bird cages. Other than the panting sound of Miss Pettifor, who was still attached to the coat hangers and catching her breath, the village green was absolutely silent. Rummage was everywhere and every which way, dangling from the trees and gently floating over the grass. And then during that very moment of absolute, complete and utter silence, a bird, a chiff-chaff warbler, landed on the toppermost birdcage and began to sing. For a minute, nothing else happened. And then Mrs. Bois Brioche de Fontana Haradale Keslow Brisbane and Mrs. Colonel Adria Slope Nethertop Ashbridge Terence Poswinski by, and Mrs. Gustavo Wentworth Worthington Donquist Torsdale Blinden Perstancy and Withers, and Mrs. Randolfo Blunt Maritonk Goodland Cerny Attenblock Carsdall Tentwood and everyone else began to giggle. Then everyone began to laugh so hard they had to sit down. And since everyone was now sitting down, they decided to have a picnic right then and there amid the jumble. The cakes from the bake sale table were passed around and the little bird who sang at just the right moment hopped about enjoying the crumbs. Sometimes things work out differently than you expect and sometimes that's when the best things happen and sometimes a jumble straightens everything out in the end. Soon the cats felt a shift in the wind through their fur and they leaped back onto the tangled jamboree of twangling wire coat hangers. All were quickly borne aloft. Homeward ho, shouted Miss Pettifor with pleasant in hand and feeling very jolly and only a little sorry that she had not had the chance of selling her pea coat. As always after an airborne adventure, Miss Pettifor set out a magnificent feast. There was currant toast squishy with butter, caramel marshmallow squares, strawberry boats oozing custard, chocolate eclairs that exploded with cream when the cats bit into them with their little white teeth, 
and a special treat for Pleasant, a pie made from thick slices of Bramley apple with just the right amount of tangy in the tangy sweet. There was a satisfying silence as all tucked into the generous tea. Sometimes there was a mmm and a yum and the tiny sound of whiskers being licked clean, but mostly the only sound was the soothing clicketing of metal coat hangers as the giant ball rolled lazily in the breeze from one end of the garden to the end. So Kea, the coat hangers had all been wrapped up into a ball and were stuck together because they're wire coat hangers and those tend to stick together real, real well. Okay, that was the ball that they were all attached to and that was knocking into everything. All right, so that's that's our chapter for today. But before we go, I think I need to talk to Leo for a minute. Okay. Leo, how's your day going? Oh. <laughs> Where <laughs> did I chase you off? Hey Leo. What? Is today a special day? Yeah. Yeah? Do you want to tell us what day it is? Is it okay? Yeah, the story went too long, and I thought it would be too long again. You thought the story might be too long? Yeah. Yeah. Um, can I tell your friends what day it is? Because it's a special yeah. day, right? Yeah. Yeah? Hey, friends, it's Leo's birthday today. So I'm going to unmute you, and I want you to wish him a happy birthday, okay, before we go? Happy birthday, Leo. Happy birthday, Leo. Happy birthday, Leo. It's a wonderful idea, but we've we've tried the singing and it doesn't work out quite as well over Zoom as it does in person. But Leo, um, I will be at school tomorrow, and I will take a picture of the choices you have for your book, your gift from me and the other teachers. So I'll um, I'll email your mom with some pictures, and you can choose your book, and I'll leave it for you to pick up. Okay. Okay. I saw a note. You saw a note. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. It was from yeah. the teachers. Yeah. Well, I've been talking to your mom a lot. Yeah. And I'm trying to send you a note every morning. If are you reading those emails with your mom and dad? Yeah. Good. Okay. All right. Okay, Leo. Have a wonderful rest of your birthday. Okay. I, you got a beautiful day. You got a nice sunny day for your birthday. You're so lucky. Okay, guys. Um, I'll say goodbye and I will see you all. Bye everybody. Bye. 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 everybody. Bye everybody. Bye everybody. See you later. See everybody later. Bye. 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 Bye.